Network, Chris Broussard. First of all, the Houston Rockets leak some sort of memo, and it ends up at the other place. Now it's a national story. Yep. Right before the game tonight, this feels, I mean, I, I don't think I'm overstating it here. It feels like more manipulation from now organizationally toward the league. If I'm Adam Silver, I am not happy with this this no, morning. It's gone too far. It's gone too far. And beyond Adam Silver being bothered by it, if I'm sick of it, if you're sick of it, how do you think the officials and the Warriors will be? When you see Steve Kerr go out in a press conference, Steve Kerr, and mock an opponent the way he did with James Harden, that shows you how upset and focused he and his players will be. The Warriors' problem all season long has been lack of focus, boredom, complacency. Yeah. You're not going to see that. I'm picking them to win tonight. I don't I'm not saying it's going to be an easy series. Oh, you like Houston but tonight? I, no, no. I like I, uh, the Golden I State I like tonight. the Warriors tonight, too. Yes, because they're not going to lose focus in this series. One, because of how good Houston is. But two, because this is – they're sick of the – Talk about the refs. And this has gone from gamesmanship, which we get. Phil Jackson throw, did this. Right. Throw it out there a little bit. You know, put something in the ref's head. But this has gone from that to belittling us. Now you're saying, oh, we shouldn't have won our title last year. Now you're questioning our greatness. You already got Clint Capella running his mouth all the time. And now you're basically insulting us and saying we're not that good. We only won last year because of the refs. I think you're going to get a great performance from Golden State tonight. I totally agree. By the way, in that in that memo that got leaked, did they put in the fact they were 0 for 27 right, on threes? They forgot that. For, right? <laughs> there, there's a – Michael Jordan in the 98 finals, uh, he said he stopped talking to the referees. I remember this. Right, because – we have, I think okay. we have a clip. So we have the clip. This is Michael Jordan in 98, who, by the way, it's not like Michael never complained about calls. Magic constantly right. chirped to refs. All right, that's Michael Jordan saying, when we mouth off to the refs, we're giving away free points. They, they may call something that really they wouldn't have called before, whether it's a technical or a regular foul, whatever. If they were going to do that with Michael Jordan, they were wearing Jordan's sneakers in their off time, <laughs> right? They were asking for autographs after games. How do you think they're going to respond, even if it's on a subconscious level? Sure. To James Harden and Chris Paul and all these guys running their mouth, not only during the game, but now I got to hear your GM. By the way, did you notice in the Rockets' memo to the NBA that they mentioned – I talked about this yesterday. I'm not sure you did, but I talked about it yesterday. Joy was here. I said veteran officials are generally in all sports – uh, less inclined to be uh, uh, swayed. Right. The NBA's got 70 officials or close to it. Only 30 of them work the playoffs, and then it gets down to about, doesn't get down to about 20 by this time of the year. Yep. So the bottom line is you're dealing with the best officials and veteran officials, and Houston noted that uh, the veteran officials <laughs> right. have a bias. <laughs> I would say the veteran officials lack bias and, and just aren't going to deal with your chirping. I, I totally agree. And here's the flip side of it, too, or, or another element. Scott Foster, we know his yeah. history with the, with the Rockets, yeah. doesn't, you know, has had issues with Chris Paul and James Harden in the past. He's doing the game tonight. I'm not worried about Scott Foster, but I wonder with the Rockets – could this get in their head? The officiating has become such a big deal for them. And Chris Paul, as, as much as I respect him, you see he gets uh, emotionally oh, un unwound he at got times. He hinged the other yeah, day. Yeah, that's like, dude, what are you doing? And I wonder if it's going to mess with them, just the fact that they know, oh, we got Scott Foster now. You know we're not getting any calls. What Houston has to do is they have to get that out of their mind. And secondly, read the game. First quarter, you will know how they're calling stuff. And again, I agree with them that Clay was in landing space. But if that's happening tonight, tonight and they're not calling it, adjust. Just say, okay, they're not going to give us these calls. We have to play through it. And if we get them, great, but we're not going to worry about that. We have to play our game. So we'll see how tough mentally the Rockets are. Cannot. Tonight's great. I get Milwaukee, Boston. Oh, great night. Oh. And then I get Golden State, Houston. Tonight's one of the best NBA nights of the year. You're going to get two great games. Only thing, only thing to be honest with you, that this month is missing 
is LeBron in the playoffs. NBA's got all the teams I like to watch are there. Now, stay there. I want to talk about the Sixers. They got big decisions about Portland doing something last night that drove me crazy. Chris Broussard, don't go anywhere. But I want to get to this. Um, you know, I've said before, I've made my kind of comments known about Westbrook, a great transformative talent, but I think there's limitations how far he can get you. I think he plays in a tunnel. I think there's a certain rigidity to him, and I think this year you've come a little bit toward my side, that you love him more than I do, but there is a certain rigidity. So, And I think the franchise is walking on eggshells around him because it's a small market. So Sam Presti comes out after the season ended, and this is classic Sam Presti in Oklahoma City, terrified of Westbrook. The quote is, and there's a reason so many people are in this room today. Russell has helped us achieve a certain level. Okay. Then he goes on to say, well, he's not perfect. None of us are. Obviously, don't qualify it. Then he goes on to say, I I'm not going to let 11 years of contributions be overshadowed by a couple of pretty tough months. It's not a pretty tough months. It's three years, first round exits, three years and four total playoff wins. I think this is classic Presti. And by the way, Russell Westbrook in his, is, is Presti said, among other things, Russell's changed. I see growth. But here was Russell's exit interview. He was actually in a very good mood. So I like when he, he talked. He was at the happiest I've seen him forever. It's almost like the stress of the season was done. He's happy. He does feel like the season stress is off his shoulder. That's the happiest he's been. But what he's saying is, I am what I am. Well, the issue is three years, four wins. We want you to understand that some of what you are can be a little enigmatic or problematic for the franchise and teammates. So what do you make of that whole thing? Well, when you look at though that press conference juxtaposed against the ones in the playoffs, okay, after every game, that is what you need to know about Russell Westbrook. That's the problem, if you will. He can't turn it on and off, okay? During the game, he's on, and he's playing 110 miles an hour every single game, every single minute of the game. That's why he can rack up the triple doubles, but that's also why he doesn't play the minute 46 differently than minute 16, and that's a problem for them. You saw it in the press conferences in the playoffs – He's still in game mode. He can't turn it off. So he's all amped up. He's got his game face on. He's mad. He's not answering questions. Now that the season is over, he's he can go, he can turn it off. And that's what you saw. By all accounts, Russ is a nice guy. Yeah, this is Paul George has raved about. He got George to stay. Yes, this is it. When Russell comes into the phone booth of the arena and he puts that cape yes. on, he's got, he has got this is Russell. If you talk to people outside the arena, he's two people. He really is. He's like right. nice, fashionable, fun, great dad, Russ. He enters that arena, and it is just, it's like a and boxer with no jab. Right. He's, just he's, going he's throwing haymakers. And just like he can't turn it off in the game or in the press conference, he can't turn it off in the game, and that's the challenge. As far as Sam Presti's comments, I'm fine with that publicly because obviously you don't come out and just blast your, your franchise Of course. Player. So you you I I'm fine with the sugar coating and the you walking on eggshells and all that, but behind closed doors, as long as you're telling him the truth, he is right. They've been talking with Russ about this for years, understanding time and score, pace of play. That's why Mo Cheeks is there as an assistant. I mean, Mo Cheeks was one of the most poised point guards we've ever seen. Sure was. He totally knew how to play that way. So you know how frustrating it can be for him when Russ doesn't get it. The thing is, is he? I don't know that he's ever going to be able to get it. No, I just think this is who Russell is, and it's okay. He's a gift to all of us. If you've ever seen Russell Westbrook play live, he's a gift to all of us. But there are players He's a very rigid personality, and you, when you add the layer of intensity of the playoffs to an intense guy, did you notice how happy he appeared? Right. It was like you lifted. Do you know how bummed out MJ would be after getting out of <laughs> the first round of the playoffs? Michael Jordan was still petty in his Hall of Fame speech. <laughs> Russell felt like, Whew. all right, that play. That's, I think, in fact, I saw a story earlier this year from Royce Young, who covers OKC, yep, yep. and Royce said, he goes, when it was Paul's team, it was a little more chill locker room. Paul got hurt. It became Russ's team. The locker room got a little tight. And because I think, I do think intense people, I think that, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, it spreads. Like if I was really intense and a yeller it's and a screamer. It's contagious. It's yeah. contagious. Yeah. Intensity is contagious. So is chill. 
And I think Russell adds an intensity. I want, I want to segue to this. The Sixers have big decisions. Embiid, Simmons, Butler, Tobias Harris can't pay all of them. Okay, Embiid, six treatments to be able to play. He yeah, is hurt. At 25 years old. You don't like Butler as much as me. I'm Philly. I want to keep Butler. I love but Jimmy Butler is a terrific player. Terrific. Okay, and, and you see he's their closer. He's their only, not only shot, but he has to be huge for them to be able to win this series. So yeah. I, I, I like putting the ball in his hands the way they did yesterday. No problem with Butler's game. There's no way I'm turning my franchise over to him. Number one, he'll be 30 years old in September. Okay, so signing him for four year, a max deal, that's, I think, going to be a bad investment. And number two, we have seen, we know what he does to locker rooms. He's had trouble when he hasn't been, hasn't had the money. Like going, this year he's going into free agency and he has trouble in locker rooms. What do you think he's going to do when you empower him with a $150 million contract or something? His issues in Chicago, Minnesota, a little bit in Philadelphia, are with younger guys, guys that are younger than him that he doesn't really have to answer to. If I, I love him with the Lakers. If, he, if the Lakers end up getting Jimmy Butler, I think because LeBron is older, his stature in the league, I think Butler will respect that and won't be the cause the problems that he has in other locker rooms. I'm not turning the Sixers over to Jimmy Okay, who are you turning over to? I'm keeping my young guys. Now, I, I agree with what you're saying a bit about Embiid. I wouldn't give up on him this summer, but at some point soon, they're going to have to sit down and say, do we need to trade him prematurely? 64% of the games is a Sixer. He hasn't played. Yeah, and, and like you said, six treatments at 25 years old. You may need to move. Look, here's the thing. Ben Simmons can slide into the Joel Embiid role, and you'll be – he's not as good as Embiid at it, but you'll be fine. He can score in the post. I don't have to worry about trying to find – put him on the perimeter where nobody's going to guard him. He can score down low. He can move down there around the painted area. If you double him, he's a tremendous passer, and he can get the ball off the rebound and lead the break. And if I don't get the fast break points – then in the half court, I'm playing him near the basket. You would be fine. If you can trade Embiid and get some great shooters. By the way, this is my one thing. One star. I need a star, Nate, though. Think about what injuries did to the Portland Trailblazers. Brandon Roy yeah. and Greg Oden. Or they could be the Warriors. Seriously. No, they, I mean, you, you, it, to me, I always start with availability is the beginning of ability. I love Embiid. 25, six treatments nah, a day I, to get on the floor. And remember, they, they dealt with this with Andrew Bynum. They Fortunately, they didn't end up giving him the huge contract, but you saw Bynum was a, a talented player. Huge, huge talent. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.